the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations present The Pacific Story. In the mounting fury of world conflict, events in the Pacific are taking on ever greater importance. Here is the story of the Pacific and the millions of people who live around this greatest sea. The drama of the peoples whose destiny is at stake in the Pacific War. Here is the tale of the war in the Pacific and its meaning to us and to the generations to come. Tonight's Pacific story, Malacca Strait, Gateway to the Southwest Pacific, comes to you from Washington, D.C. and Hollywood as another public service with drama, the past and present, and commentary by Admiral Sir James Somerville, head of the British Admiralty Delegation in Washington. Malacca Strait, gateway to the Southwest Pacific. Nations have struggled for control of the stretch of water between the Malay Peninsula and the great island of Sumatra. The blood of Britishers, Frenchmen, Dutchmen, Spaniards, Portuguese, and Asiatics has mingled with the waters of this strait. Today, the Japanese control of this stretch of water, the Straits of Malacca, is being challenged by the Allies. Until this control is finally wrested from them, the Japanese will hold the strategic advantage in this part of the Pacific. I spent all my days in the Malacca Straits. This is a steamship pilot. Look here at this map. The pilot points to the Straits. It's 520 miles long. 520 miles. And for a long time, the Japanese controlled every foot of it. In the years before the war, the Straits were the main sea lane for ships en route from Europe and India to China and the Indies. New United Nations ship has gone through the Straits now for more than three years. And if Singapore and the Malay Peninsula and a good part of Sumatra are to be taken back, we first got to take back the Straits of Malacca. I saw the Japanese take the Straits. The importance of the Straits is even more far-reaching than that. This is an observer. When the Straits are open, cargo ships and warships can proceed through the Bay of Bengal and through the Straits into the South China Sea. With Singapore recaptured, the British will have a strong naval base from which to operate in the theater. And with the American Navy based in the Philippines, the control of the South China Sea will be absolute. The Japanese communications to the south will be entirely cut, isolating the enemy in the islands of the Southwest Pacific. And then we will be able... As the Straits of Malacca are today a focus of struggle in the Southwest Pacific, so they were for centuries. The Portuguese came first. Ah, Welcome back to Malacca, my captain. Ah, it is good to be back. But I hardly recognize the ship. Ah, Malacca has changed. It is now the greatest trading center between the east and the west. Wonderful, wonderful. A wall 20 feet high around the city. And the bastions and breastworks. Hey, you've made a fort of it. The strongest in the street. Uh, see that? A bronze cannon. We have 40 cannons like that, brought out here from Portugal. Ah, Malacca is growing. We have built a mission. We are expanding our trade. We need our cannon. Ah, if you are to hold this base, yes. Without Malacca as a base, our trade would be crippled. I have been able to set up new trading posts only because we have this base here. Mm, yes. Uh, what progress have you to report? Well, since last I was here in Malacca, I have sailed through all the seas of the Indies. I took with me Malay pilots, and they knew every current and wind and landfall. We now have trading posts in the Spice Islands at Tidore, Tanate, and Banda. Excellent, my captain, excellent. And from these trading posts, we will be in a position to expand our trade far. To the fortress city of Malacca, on the west coast of Malaya, and about midway in the Straits of Malacca, 
came traders of all nations, Chinese, Indians, Malays, Arabs. Religion came, Francis Xavier to preach and to teach and to minister to the sick, and missionaries of other religions, Buddhists, Muslims, Brahmins, and Confucianists. Malacca grew with each passing year, and the life of the city was its trade. In 1580, the men in the trade at Malacca had something special to talk about. Portugal has been united with Spain, and the Spaniards are going to take over all our holdings out here in the Pacific. Eight years later, in 1588, there was still more to talk about. Spain's sea power has been broken. The invincible armada has been destroyed by the British. Destroyed the armada? Completely. Portugal is done in the Pacific. Yes. Now it will be between the British and the Dutch. For 230 years, Britain and the Netherlands competed for the Indies and for Malaya and Southeast Asia. And with each passing year, the conflict grew. The Dutch, step by step, extending their control. The British moving down into Malaya, fitting out expeditions at Malacca, founding Singapore and driving into Java. The struggle between the two powers was at last resolved in 1824. Britain agrees to give the Netherlands a free hand in the islands of the Indies. The Netherlands agree to give Britain a free hand on the mainland of Asia. The Dutch cleared out of the Malay Peninsula and the British moved in. Malacca Straits became a great trade route. Ship traffic increased. New cities rose. Sabang, Penang, Palembang, Singapore. But over them fell a shadow. They overhauled us and came up over the side. Not a man among my crew had a chance. How long do you think the pirates followed you? They must have followed us all the way from Penang. Mm -hmm. Waited until they got your vessel in the narrows of the strait, did they? Yes. And they knew what we had aboard. Well, they have spies in every port. We have them here in Singapore. Well, they put me and my mate in a boat, and that's the last we saw of the vessel. Are you and the British government going to stand by and have us taken one by one by these blackguards? Or are you going to do something to stop this piracy? We don't have the means to police these waters. Then why don't you organize an expedition and hunt them down? Wipe them out? They have hideouts in a thousand inlets and swamps and small islands the length of the strait. Then find them. Why, they even come in and raid the harbors. They did it at Penang and down at Palembang. You've got to stop it. Good day, sir. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Commander, Captain Worthington is here to see you, sir. Hmm? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Send him in. Yes, sir. Captain Worthington, the commander will see you now. No, thank you, thank you. I'm ready to sail, Commander. Yes, Captain. I have an idea that the pirates have agents here in Singapore, and that they know not only where I'm sailing, but what's in my hold. Yes. Well, now, what assurance can you give me that my vessel will not be followed out and overhauled? Unfortunately, we're not able at this time to make any guarantees. However, we have several men of war in the vicinity. Oh, that's not enough. The Royal Navy has promised us several more warships. Am I to the... wait for them? Now, let me tell you this, sir. Unless this piracy in the Straits is stopped, this colony of Singapore is lost. Merchantmen must be protected and the streets must be made secure. Singapore was virtually blockaded. The city of Malacca, which had a population of 100,000 when the Portuguese came, faded. Its population dwindled to half and less. Its harbors, where the largest ships in the world once called, became almost worthless. The pirates harassed sea traffic throughout the length of the straits and in the waters of the China Sea. Then something began to happen. Yeah. British men of war. British men of war. Why didn't the lookout sign it before it was running us down? It just came up over the horizon before any of us saw it. And every inch of sail! They've hit us on the forecastle. We're hit! Rebels sail! Get on that side! Ship by ship. Royal Navy war vessels turned up in the southwest Pacific. Singapore became their base. Penang became a base. A strong naval base at each end of the Malacca Straits. Piracy was driven from the waters of the Straits and the China Seas and the Sunda Sea. And this quarter became a bastion of naval strength. <laughs> Once 
Once again, the Straits of Malacca became the important seaway from the Bay of Bengal to China and the Indies. Great ships steamed through its 520 miles and driving ports rose along its shores. a big port, but he is one of the most important in these waters. Sabang is on the small island of Pulu Way, off the northern tip of Sumatra. You see, when you're approaching the straits from the Bay of Bengal, that is from the northwest, Sabang here is the first port you reach. Sabang guards the northwest approaches to the straits. There's a cooling station here. And see that tower up there? That's the radio station. The city is a tight little community against the waterfront. And another thing. The bang's got a weather station, so shipmasters can put in there for the last-minute weather information. Across the strait from Sabang, where the straits are more than 200 miles wide, is Penang. Penang is an island just off the coast of Malaya. Something must be up here. This is the observer again. You Britishers must be expecting trouble here, landing all these troops. Well, Penang's an important port. Yeah. It's been important several hundred years since the day of the East India Company. I didn't know Penang was that old. Oh, indeed? Huh. There's been a port here since, well, oh, since about the time of the French Revolution. In those days, it was called St. Edward Island. Uh-huh. Strategically located, commanding the northeast approaches to the Straits and the western shore of Malaya. Yes. That's right. But, uh... Why are you bringing all these troops in here now? We need them to reinforce the Air Force here. I've never been aware until now that so much of Penang is level. A good two-thirds of it is level. Well, you must have airfields to protect the naval base. Well, you've got plenty of space here. More than 100 square miles. We shall probably have use for it. To the west of the Straits is the thousand-mile-long island of Sumatra. I sail along the shore of Sumatra like this. 10,000 times. The planet is on the bridge. Sumatra is just about as long as the state of California and just about the same shape. Oh. oh this is my first passage through the Straits. When you've handled the wheels as many times as I have, you'll know every inch of it. I say, look oh, up your helm, mm. my lad. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, man, that's a big island over there. Seems to have a lot of mountains on it. Keep your eye on the coast. Uh, aye, aye, sir. You can. There's a melting range on that island that runs from one end to the other. Aye. Twenty-five volcano peaks in it. Twenty-five? Aye. Oh. I say, look at the color of that water. Dirty gray and not a ripple on it. Keep your eye on the uh, coast. Uh, uh, aye, aye, sir. Right over there is the city of Mendan. Mendan? Uh, we'll be put in there. Not this trip. Mendan is a fair city. 75,000 people. Well, watch him now. A city right in the middle of a jungle. Aye, that's what it is. Lots of wild animals there. The big Sumatra rhinoceros, The kind with two horns instead of one. And bears, crocodiles, and lots of lizards and turtles and snakes. Aye, lots of animals. But there's some pretty fair cities too, all along the shore of the streets. And most of the cities are connected by fine highways. Highways? Looks like nothing but wilderness and swamp over there. Keep your eye on the coast. Aye, aye, sir. Well, this street of Malacca is like a main street, with everything growing up along it. The question is, who is going to control it? By late 1941, with the war in Europe raging, Britain had little to spare to reinforce the strongholds of the Straits of Malacca. Some additional warplanes were dispatched to Malaya. Two capital ships, which could still be spared from European waters, owing to battle damage to other capital ships, were dispatched to Singapore naval base. By December, the situation in the Pacific had become crucial. the Straits of Malacca to Singapore came the 35,000-ton HMS Prince of Wales and the mighty HMS Repulse. 
As the news came of the Japanese blow at Pearl Harbor, the Prince of Wales and the Repulse left Singapore and headed out through the South China Sea toward an advanced operational base. December 10th, 1941. HMS Prince of Wales and HMS Repulse have been sunk by Japanese torpedo planes in the South China Sea off the coast of Malaya. 27 torpedo bombers and 36 high-level bombers attacked the battleship and the battle cruiser. Both were struck with all the might. On the next day, waves of Japanese dive bombers swarmed down on Penang. I was in the harbor at Penang during the raid. I was piloting a vessel down to Singapore. The harbor was crowded with warships and merchantmen, Chinese junks and native boats of all kinds. The damage was bad. Japanese have made landings at Kotobaru on the east side of the Malaya Peninsula. Well, there's nothing but swamps and jungles on the east side of the peninsula. They will probably try to pinch off the peninsula by cutting directly across it. I don't think they can do that from Kotobaru. Oh, but they can land above Kotobaru at Singora in Thailand. And then they can cut down behind us here at Penang. That is what we must anticipate. Can Penang be defended from attack from the land side? There is only two and a half miles of water between us and the mainland, and the Japanese drive down behind us. On the night of December 14, 1941, they loaded the women and children aboard the vessel I was piloting. And in the dark, we got underway from the wrecked port and headed down through the straits for Singapore. The Japanese took the airfield and the rail sea junction at Kota Baru. Below this, only 200 miles above Singapore... They took the highway sea junction at Kwantan. And above Kota Baru, they landed in force at Singora in Thailand. They're driving across the peninsula. They're going to try and outflank Penang. We will evacuate all troops and military equipment at once. Penang was lost. With the Japanese in this strategic stronghold, they commanded the northern end of the Straits of Malacca. Soon their aircraft were on the Penang airfields. And soon, in full fury, the Japanese were driving down the Malay Peninsula along the Straits of Malacca toward Singapore. As they drove down through the tangled, steaming jungles, other Japanese forces were striking. January 11th, 1942. Strong Japanese forces have invaded the Dutch East Indies. January 23rd, 1942. Japanese forces have landed at Balakpapan in Java and are now threatening Borneo. February 15th, 1942. Singapore has fallen. The Japanese held both ends of the Straits of Malacca. In another month, they were in Sumatra and Java to the south and Burma to the north. The principal sea lane from Europe to China and the Indies was in the hands of the enemy. We managed to get out of Singapore before it fell. It was like the evacuation of Penang. Our decks and our holes were crowded with refugees. We headed out into the dark so we would not be spotted by Japanese airplanes. We hoped we would not be spotted by Japanese submarines. Our best route back to India was through the Straits. But we knew that we would have to go the long way around, for the streets were closed tight. Now, intelligence officers operating with the natives in their small boats along the 520-mile stretch of the Straits of Malacca saw something that no man in all history had ever seen. Good Lord, look at that. A full Japanese battle fleet heading northward through the straits. A a big uh, warship. Big? That's a battleship there. There's another. And that back there must be an aircraft carrier. Yes, yes it is. And there's another. And one, two. No, no, three cruisers. Lord. And look at the destroyers. And even escorts. And and never... See, uh, so, so many big ships. That's the first time any Japanese task force has steamed into the Bay of Bengal. Uh, where are they going? They may be heading for India. 
I say, help him get the cover off the wireless. We'll have to inform the government. The Japanese immediately made use of the strategic straits. Behind the battle fleet came supply ships. They had a sea lane to Burma and India. The Japanese have taken the Andaman Islands, commanding the northeast approaches to the Straits of Malacca. Streams of Japanese supplies are flowing through the Straits of Malacca into the Bay of Bengal. With their strong line of communications through the Straits guarded now by Penang and Sabang, the Japanese drove boldly up into Burma, threatened India, Ceylon, and even Madagascar and Africa. But today, the picture in the region of the Straits of Malacca is different. The tide has turned. India has become one of the greatest military bases on Earth. North Burma has been recaptured. And powerful units of the British fleet now command the Bay of Bengal and are knocking at the northern gate of the Straits of Malacca. And now, the communiques of a different kind are coming in. April the 19th, 1944. British Admiralty announced that carrier-borne planes from an Allied force, which included British, American, French, and Dutch units, attacked Sabang. This fleet was commanded by Admiral Sir James Somerville. April 25th, 1944. The Admiralty announced today that Sabang has been bombarded by an Allied force of battleships, cruisers. December 10th, 1944. The British Admiralty today announced the formation of a huge British Pacific fleet. Admiral Sir Bruce Fraser, who relieved Admiral Sir James Somerville in command of the Eastern Fleet, is its commander. December the 19th, 1944. Sir Bruce Fraser, Admiral Commander of the new British Pacific Fleet, is conferring with a memorable Admiral Chester W. Nimitz. The reconquest of the Straits of Malacca is already underway. British amphibious forces are striking down the Arakan coast toward Rangoon, and strong units of the British Pacific Fleet are in the waters of the Southwest Pacific in the vicinity of Australia. The Straits of Malacca is the most traveled stretch of water in this part of the world. Who controls it? Controls Singapore and Malaya and Sumatra. How it will be retaken remains to be seen. But what is sure is when the Straits of Malacca are retaken, a new epoch will open in the war in the Pacific. The Straits of Malacca are the roadway to Singapore and to China. And now, to tell the significance of the operations in this region and their importance to the war in the Pacific, the National Broadcasting Company presents Admiral Sir James F. Somerville, KCB, KBE, and DSO of the British Navy. The next voice you hear will be that of Admiral Somerville. We take you now to Washington, D.C., The Straits of Malacca are certainly the roadway from the west to Singapore, to the South China Seas, to the Philippines, and yes, to Japan itself. There are other roads, but they're much longer. For example, the distance from Aden to Manila via the Malacca Straits is just under 5,000 miles. But to get there around the south and up the east coast of Australia, the ship has to steam over 11,000 miles. From Cape Town to Manila via the Straits is 7,000 miles, as compared with nearly 11,000 miles, you've come around the south of Australia. You may ask to what extent are Americans interested in this western approach to the Pacific. You may say, surely our fleet, our armies, and our air forces in the Pacific receive all their supplies from America. That's quite true. The American Pacific fleet does receive its supplies from America. But the British Pacific fleet, on the other hand, draws practically all its supplies from the west and from Australia. So for the British, the opening of the Straits of Malacca is a matter of very great importance. But even the American Pacific fleet could benefit in one respect if these straits were open. The oil it burns is brought the American fleet over 9,000 miles across the Pacific. If, however, oil is brought from the Persian Gulf, a saving over 4,000 miles is affected. So you see how important these straits are, and how necessary it is that we should regain control of them. The control cannot be regained fully until Singapore has been recaptured. When is this likely to happen? Well, uh, that must be anyone's guess at the moment. 
But the rapid advance by Admiral Mountbatten's forces in Burma and the impunity with which Allied ships have been operating in the Straits suggests the day is drawing much closer when the British flag will once more fly over Singapore. Command of the Straits inevitably involves command of the lands bordering those Straits, the island of Sumatra, the Malayan Peninsula. These lands are important on account of the rubber, oil, tin, lead, and other raw materials they produce and which are necessary for the full development of our war effort. I think it can be stated without exaggeration that the opening of the Straits and the release of those lands from Japanese domination will be an important factor in bringing about the final defeat of Japan. It's curious how little use the Japanese made of their opportunity when they had control of the Straits. You've heard how a month or two after the fall of Singapore, the Japanese fleet was seen steaming up the Straits and out in the Indian Ocean. I was waiting with that fleet, south of Ceylon, waiting with the hastily assembled fleet, which, as I found out subsequently, was not up to the strength of the Japanese fleet, and was deficient in that vital component of the fleet, the aircraft carriers. The Japanese looked for me on that occasion, and I looked for them. Now, both searches failed. If either of those searches had succeeded, I'd probably not be talking to you at this moment. I'd probably be, as uh, sailors put it, in uh, David Jones's locker. But after this one sortie, the Japanese retired into the Straits and never emerged again. I wonder why. They had the ball at their feet then, the goal wide open. That goal of our communications with the Middle East up the east coast of Africa, the only link we had to the Middle East at that time. If those communications had been cut, we might well have lost the war. It was indeed a critical time. But thanks to the rapid recovery of the American fleet after Pearl Harbor, thanks to the Coral Sea action, the Midway and the Guadalcanal, the Japanese fleet was drawn away and pinned down the Pacific. That was a long-distance cooperation. We now have much closer cooperation with the British and American fleets fighting side by side in the Pacific as they fought in the Mediterranean and on the coast of Normandy. And besides British, British Pacific fleet, we now have a British East Indies fleet. It's that fleet which will certainly play a leading part in reopening the Straits. In conclusion, I would like to pay a tribute to the work of the British and Dutch submarines in the Straits of Malacca and the toll they exacted from the Japanese. The score at the end of January was 15 warships sunk, ranging from a cruiser to submarine chasers, 21 large merchant vessels, 51 coasters, and 159 tugs and small craft all sunk. The gross tonnage of these ships, about 150,000 tons in all, may not be very impressive, but the work of the submarines under humid and intolerable conditions, with the wet bulb always much higher than the dry, operating in shallow, narrow waters, hunted by aircraft and surface vessels, that work certainly was most impressive. For well over a year, the Allied submarines, rather than the Japanese, have exercised control over the Straits of Malacca. Thank you, Admiral Sir James F. Somerville. Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations, as a public service to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross currents of life in the Pacific Basin. For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. To repeat, for a reprint of this Pacific Story program, Send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. The Pacific Story is written and directed by Arnold Marquis. The original musical score was composed and conducted by Thomas Peluso. Your narrator, Gain Whitman. This program came to you from Washington, D.C. and Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.